In verse 37 and 38, we read, And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. Now, boys and girls, the authorized version here translates bottles, but they're more like bags of goat skin. Back then, they put new wine into goat skin, and as the wine fermented, the goat skin expanded and eventually would harden. Now, if you filled an old, expanded, hardened goatskin bag with new wine, which would expand, the new wine would burst the goatskin as the skin could expand no further. Both the wine and the skin are spilled, as Jesus says. Fundamentally, you cannot graft Jesus Christ into their old paradigm of their traditions. You must eradicate them entirely and embrace Christ himself. Holy. After all, 2 Timothy 3.5 sums up the wineskin of the Pharisees neatly, having a, a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. You can fast, you can pray, but unless you do it to seek Christ and fill it with Christ, the bridegroom, unless you walk by faith and in repentance before him, you have missed the point entirely, and your fasting and prayer will hold nothing. You can make long prayers like the Pharisees shouting a litany of praises to yourself saying, Thank thee, Lord, that I am not like that man. Without the short, experimental prayer of the publican, God have mercy on me, a sinner, looking for that mercy in Jesus. The prayer that justifies a man, and you will miss the point entirely if you don't do that. You know, the Pharisees were simply, all they were simply is precursors to Rome and all that go her way. A form of Religion that looks pious, holy, and reverent, but is festering and putrid in the sight of God. Whitewashed tombs is what God calls the Pharisee. A form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And I pray that's not you, friend, today. I pray that's not you. Coming here with a form of godliness, but denying the power of it. The power of godliness being Jesus Christ himself. The power of godliness in constancy of repentance and humility before the Lord. The power of godliness in showing love to God and love for neighbor born from the heart from faith in Christ. What is godliness summed up according to the Bible? He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Micah 6, verse 8. My heart is greatly stirred. I sing a noble theme. My tongue's a skillful 